This is a Louisiana cane coal. This is made out of river cane. This is red cedar. The old people use this because it's rot resistant, water resistant. And this is a black hard rubber reed that come out of an ace comb in the early 1900s. This goes back to 18, the 1850s, that people, market hunters use these calls from the 1850s. So this is all Louisiana heritage for sure. And all South Louisiana used this at one time before. Uh, the reason they used it, it had a hole in it, it was a bamboo, it's river cane is what they use, mostly. It already had a hole in it, so it didn't have to drill nothing. Just a matter of cutting it, putting it together, and make, carving out a little soundboard. I'm going to demonstrate to you how you make a soundboard by hand. There's no written book, text, how to do it. They all had their little ways. I'm going to show you one way. Cedar was very good. It carried a good sound, rock resistant, like I said. They would get a cedar log, just say something like this, a cedar tree. Cut it. Take a hatchet and split it. It splits very easy. Got a good aroma to it. Now once I got it right here, I got a sharp ax and I'm gonna take a knife. I got a knife and I'm gonna make it pretty much like a pencil. Uh, and it needs to be a half inch out of finished product. You wanna make a dial pen from 1890? This is how you did it. This is, an, uh, this is a 9 16 hole. Now what this does, it gets the corners off. And you end up with something semi-round. Then I take a little sandpaper. When I get it and go to this stage and sand it, just round it off. Now this is a gauge. I got a half inch hole. I'm gonna sand it down to it fits perfect in there. Then that's the size of sound board I'm gonna use. This is a cutting jig. So I'd put a piece of cedar in here. Mark it, cut it. It more or less will look like this when I'm done. And I take a knife. This is a homemade knife I made. I'm gonna sit there and, and cut down, cut it till I hit the metal. And that's, that's my soundboard. That, I mean, that's, that's the shape of it. Once I do that, I take a file. I got a groove cut in here, it's all homemade stuff. And I'm filing it down. I want to get it flat. Because I remember I done it with a knife, it's not perfect. Then when I get it good and flat, I'm gonna cut this off, the end off. And it's gonna look just like this. This is a finished one. It don't have a groove though, but that's that's the making of a soundboard. Once I did, once I do this, I put it back in here. Now I have one made. I use for reference. I'm gonna put it together and I'm gonna put a mark. I don't want to cut my groove past that mark. So I'm gonna put it in here. I'm gonna take my knife. Now this is this is how they made them back then now. I'm gonna score it down here with a knife. And I'm gonna come on this side and score it out. This is time consuming now. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna start digging it out. Then once I dig some out, I take this little file and I file it down. Then I'll dig a little more, file it down 
until I get it like this. This is not symmetrical. This is not pretty. But remember, they were doing this to kill a duck. It wasn't about looks. So this, this is the soundboard. That's the finished product. Once I got my soundboard done, I have a bunch of big barrels cut up. And I have a bunch of little barrels. And once that, I'll just look through here with the soundboard. I got different saws. It's close to the same saw, but it's all a little different. I'm, see like this is snug. That'll work good. If it's tight in there. You, you don't want no gaps in there because your, your eye goes through it. It doesn't make a good quank. This will seal good. This will work good. Now once I get this, I look through the big barrels and I find one. I don't want it to fit. I want it to be a little big because I'm going to file it down. I'm going to cut it, shave it with my knife to get a good snug fit. Once I get it close, I got a handmade reamer. I put it in there and I'm going to turn it until this fits in there. And what I mean by that is like this. To the fit snug. I, I like to go a quarter of an inch to a half inch. The old time people use copper, but this is very common, hard rubber reeds, and they made them all these old ace combs. This will last a long time. This is what most of the market hunters use. And what you do is you cut these fingers off, and it's about the size of a about the size of a reed. And you just put it, you, it's a matter of putting it in, the, in there and just filing it down. And it's very time consuming. It takes about an hour and a half to make a reed using a file. You file that's how the old people did. They filed it down until they get it like this. This is about a 15th millimeter. And that's a, that's a cane call. <laughs> Tell us about the, 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 the business end of it, if there is a business end. If somebody wants to pay you to make a call, do you do that? And if, if not, why not? Why do you just keep it as a hobby? Well, I started doing it for my personal self. I stopped doing it because I don't have time and I took my calls and I had to mold it out. That way I can get a hundred at a time just to say it and, and, and sell them. Now I'm starting back because to me it's very important to share this heritage and this part of Louisiana is part of me. And, and, but I have a long list of people that want them. I, it takes me about three or four hours to make a call to get it right. And I, if you want to call, you can contact me through Bayou Beast. But I have about a year and a half waiting list. And, and it, people just want to live part of the, the, the culture and heritage and to hunt with them. And, and to be honest with you, this is basically what I hunt with. It, it just, it's fun. And, but I'm doing it for the love of our heritage, really. You're working on a book. Tell me about the book and how can people help you complete this book? What is it you need to finish it? I started, I started going, I used to go visit old people. L let me tell you how this started. I'd go visit old people 30 years ago and I'd bring them ducks that they couldn't hunt no more. And then they would tell me some stories. What I'm fixing to do, I used to go visit, sit down and take a store. I don't have time to do that with my work and duck calls. I would like people to send me a story maybe or call me. I'm on Facebook, they can get a hold of me. So I guess to sum this up, you're the kind of guy that instead of looking for the latest and the greatest, you're looking for the oldest and maybe the leastest. <laughs> oh, Minimal. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna tell you, my daddy would bring a Model 12 and a water jug. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe a sock to put his duck. Pretty was low sample. tech, pretty low tech. Most of, and that's, I was raised like that. and. Uh, I'm not going to say nothing about it, about how they hunt nowadays at all. It's just a different era. 
And I'm trying to keep the always going. That's a ball. <laughs>